God's word upon which we base our message this Pentecost Sunday is recorded for us in the book of Acts, the second chapter. We've heard a little bit about the accounts of Pentecost in the scripture lessons appointed for this day. In the name of Jesus, the one who the Holy Spirit always points to, dear friends. Today is Pentecost Sunday. What does that really mean? It's a day of celebration. It's a day of rejoicing about God's work in the church. Just 50 days ago, we celebrated the festival of our Lord's resurrection from the dead on Easter Sunday. We said thank you to God for the sacrifice that Jesus made when he died on the cross and paid what we owed for the forgiveness of sins and then rose again so that we could live forever. And then just 10 days ago, we remember that our Lord gathered the followers, his followers, the disciples and all the other followers on a mountainside and ascended into heaven. At that time, he told his disciples that they had a big job to do. And he told them that, they, that he would be coming back again. He told them that they were to go out and to teach and to preach and to uh, share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to baptize in the name of the triune God. And he promised that he would not leave them alone. They would not be desolate. They would not be all by themselves, but that he would send them the Holy Spirit, also known as the Helper, also known as the Comforter. They were to go to Jerusalem. And there they were to wait. And the Holy Spirit would then come to them and they would receive power so that they would be able to speak the gospel throughout the known world. And it was certainly a special day. It was Pentecost when the Holy Spirit would come. Pentecost was a special Jewish festival, also known as the Feast of Weeks or actually the Feast of Harvest or the Day of First Fruits in Jewish celebration. This was a day when people from all over the known world would gather together in the city of Jerusalem and they would bring their first fruits uh, of the harvest to the Lord, sort of like what we do on Thanksgiving. It was on this day that we are told that the disciples and the followers of Jesus were all gathered together in one place. And it was a special day, not an ordinary day. They heard the sound of rushing wind and they saw flames on the heads of the disciples waiting in that room. But the flame did not burn their hair. And in Acts 1 verse 4 we read, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And this was truly a miracle. Jews had come from every nation to Jerusalem for this festival and they spoke many different languages. Throughout the power of, through the power of the Holy Spirit, they were able to then to speak to and understand each other in their native languages. Imagine what this must have been like. This was an amazing thing that day. And then Peter decides that it is time for him to step up and to preach a sermon. So he gets up and he proclaims the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ to all the people who were listening. He tells about how Jesus was nailed to the cross, how he shed blood, how he died to forgive the sins of all people and how he rose again. This was truly an amazing story. He said, God has made this Jesus that was crucified both Lord and Christ. And then he called the people to repentance. Repent of your sins, he said. And then he called them to believe, to have faith in this Savior. And we're told that after that sermon, after he preached about Jesus, his death and resurrection, about the forgiveness of sins, repentance, and, and, and faith. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. We also think of Pentecost as the birthday of the Christian church. Today is also a good day for us to review just who is this Holy Spirit. Kind of reminds me uh, of a conversation I had with uh, someone who was a member of a different church that emphasized the gifts of the Holy Spirit and, and the power of the Holy Spirit a little bit more than what we believe the Scripture actually declares and said to me, you Lutherans, do you believe in the Holy Spirit? 
what do you believe about the Holy Spirit? I said, oh, yes, we believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe that the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy Trinity. He's true God with the Father and the Son. The Father is God. Jesus is God. The Spirit is God. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 3.16, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit lives in you? Right here inside. The Holy Spirit lives in us. It is that third article of the Apostles' Creed that speaks about the Holy Spirit that we use to confess our faith each week. We say, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And Martin Luther wrote an explanation to this third article about the Holy Spirit, and, and we sometimes memorize it in our confirmation classes. And Martin Luther also begins, always begins the explanation to these articles by saying, what does this mean? It's a good question to ask. He wrote, I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. So it is the Holy Spirit who always is the cause of faith, always the cause of anything that we do in Christ's name. So what exactly is it that the Holy Spirit does? The work of the Holy Spirit is to bring us to faith in Jesus Christ. And God uses tools, baptism and Holy Communion, to do this. We saw it happen today as little Olivia was brought into the family of God. And I loved when um, Olivia's mother read the Bible verse and said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And she emphasized Jesus. Jesus is the one who God sent. So the work of the Holy Spirit is to always point people to Jesus, to bring us to faith in Jesus. And once we come to faith, the work of the Holy Spirit then, once we come to faith in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit enables us to mature and to grow and, and, and to, to grow in our faith and to lead a God-pleasing life. That means that as we study the Scripture, we learn the Ten Commandments, we learn God's will, and we follow His will. And the Holy Spirit also keeps us strong in our faith throughout our entire life, through the ups and downs of life, when things get difficult. And we say, God, where are you? Aren't you there to help me? And the Holy Spirit, who is the comforter, assures us, yes, God is there. And he will help us. He keeps us strong in the faith. He keeps us faithful all the days of our life. And the Holy Spirit does all of these things through through the word and sacrament ministry of the church. We mentioned holy baptism. Today we're also going to be gathering around the Lord's table. It is the Holy Spirit who, who uses this word of God that we are sharing with you today. And it is the Holy Spirit who uses holy baptism to bring that child into faith in the kingdom. And it is the Holy Spirit who gives us forgiveness of sins through that sacrament of the altar. We need the Holy Spirit because we have a sickness. It's called sin sickness. And because we have that sinful human nature, you and I are spiritually blind and we're dead and we're enemies of God and we cannot come to believe in Jesus on our own. And when we read the scripture... When we look at it through human eyes, when we look at it through that veil that's on our eyes because of sin, we cannot see God's word in its truth and in its purity. We need the Holy Spirit to open up the truth of the scripture to us. And so we depend on the Holy Spirit to lead us to the truth in the scripture. Paul reminds us again in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3, he says, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. You can't just wake up one day and say, I think I'm going to decide to believe in Jesus. If you say you're going to believe in Jesus, it's because the Holy Spirit has already prompted you through his word, through his sacrament, 
to believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior. We also, we also call the work of the Holy Spirit conversion or regeneration or new birth or renewal. And when we are baptized and come to faith in Jesus Christ, we are born again. We have a different nature. We come into the family of God. And through this faith in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit works a change, a transformation of our whole life. He changes our will, He changes our attitudes, and He changes our desires so that we now strive to overcome sin and to live for Jesus, so that we follow his word. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. When we are baptized, we become a new creation. We are not the same. What happened on the day of Pentecost tells us that God wants all people to be a part of his family. God wasn't, didn't just come for a certain group of people. He came for all people. And unfortunately, not everyone believes that he came for them. Paul says in 1 Timothy verse two, chapter 2, verse 4, he says, God wants all people to come to a knowledge of the truth. And in 2 Peter 3, verse 9, we read, The Lord is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. This is why. We have such a wonderful God who is not his so long-suffering. He wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to be in heaven. And you will not hear this in all churches. It's not PC to say that anymore. But it's what the scripture says. It's what we must preach on the basis of the scripture. I can't compromise. I must say that it is only Jesus Christ who saves. There is only one way to eternal life. And God has given his church the work of going and telling. The work of the Holy Spirit goes on today throughout the work of the church. Many hear the gospel preached and they're baptized and they come into the family of God today, whether they're infants or whether they're adults. It is the Holy Spirit who enables us to speak up to tell others what God has done for us in and through Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Spirit who helps us to stand up in a world today that's very difficult to speak the name of Jesus. It is the Holy Spirit that enables us to share our faith, first with those around us in our homes, perhaps a husband or wife who is not a believer, perhaps a son or a daughter, Perhaps people at work, friends, relatives, or people in the neighborhood. How sad it will be when we know that loved ones will not be in heaven because they don't have faith in Jesus Christ. That hurts us. That makes us sad. We take the challenge today. We take a challenge. We pray for opportunities to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with those we love first and then out into the workplace and in the neighborhood. And the challenge today is to begin praying for those in your own circle of family and friends, those who do not know Jesus, those who do not know his forgiveness and love, those who do not accept his truth in the scripture. We need to pray. We need to pray for those in the world who do not know him and know that you will not be alone. For just as Jesus promised the disciples that the Holy Spirit would be given to them, so you and I have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in his word. The more we read his word, the more his word becomes a part of us in our hearts, the more that the Holy Spirit uses us to know what God wants and know, to know his will. So we pray for those in the world. Today we thank God for the Holy Spirit and we pray that our faith will be on fire as we serve our Savior and as we live for him every day. So we rejoice today and we celebrate that we have the gift of the Spirit. He brings us to faith in Jesus Christ through holy baptism. 
He keeps us in the faith and nourishes us in the faith as we study his word and as we receive the sacrament of the altar. The Holy Spirit helps us to live for Jesus, to mold us and to shape us into the kind of person that God wants us to be. And it's the Holy Spirit who helps us to connect people to Jesus each day of our lives. And it's the Holy Spirit who keeps us faithful so that we will one day rejoice in the presence of Jesus in heaven. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we rejoice today that you gave us your Holy Spirit. We rejoice that we have a God, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father is God. The Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. Strengthen our faith in our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray that you would give us an extra measure of your spirit. That you would fill us with a desire, with a passion to share the love of Jesus Christ with one and all. And to know that one day, one day we will spend eternity with you. Be with us now and help us to live for you. Fill us with that spirit and fill us with joy. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.